did become Teachers of the school, other members of the Vanua, parents, and of course the children here. I want to thank the uh, head teacher and the members of the community for inviting me here today. Uh, every moment that I get to visit a particular school in the interior or in the islands, I cherish those moments. It's an amazing sight. Whenever I go to the interior, this is a bit of interior, but the real interior is, you know, Wanimala, Wanimokutu, Mandaribatu, but still this is also a bit isolated. And of course, schools in Yasawas, or on the other side of Kandabu, Next year, we're planning to go to Lomaiviti, the Lomaiviti group, Lao Lomaiviti. And when we see how the schools were constructed some five, six, seven decades ago, that demonstrates the vision elders of this village, this society, or various other societies had those days about education. They, a lot of the elders here, some of the elders here who are here with us today, a lot of them wanted to go to full, complete primary school, high school, universities like myself, master here, Undre, master there, but they couldn't go. Most of them were very bright, very intelligent, hardworking as well. But they couldn't go. Couldn't go because they were the only child of their parent or only son of their parent to look after the others, other siblings. Or couldn't go because the school was too far. Or couldn't go because they couldn't afford to buy a pair of uniform. Couldn't afford to pay tuition fees. Or no one told them, no one gave them the right advice about the importance of education. So they stayed home, struggled, worked hard in the farm. And every day when they were working hard on the farm, they were saying to themselves, our children must not face the same hardship. Our children must go to school. They collected, they collected money. They sold little fish that to get, they could get, or little uh, taro, coconuts, etc., and put aside a little amount of money, bit by bit by bit, and constructed these schools. All these buildings, most of it is yours. We came in later. Government came in later. Initially, it was yourself. And this is the story throughout Fiji where communities got together, sacrificed the little income they got, and constructed one or two classrooms, and came to the ministry to care care, to send one or two teachers so that the children can get education. What I want to tell you now is the Banimarama government has a vision that you make your children you give birth to the child, raise it up to five years. And from there, we'll take them. We'll take them to the kindergarten, to the primary school, the high school, and university. And they'll finish their first degree, and they'll enter the labor market. So those days of hardship is gone. What I also want to tell you today, is now is Banimarama government's policy to start 
the maintenance and repair of every school in this country. This year, we invested close to $8 million. Enormous amount of work we have done. About five to six weeks ago, we visited schools in Wanimala area. And it was a heartbreaking scene. Toilets were stinking, roof leaking, quarters not available for st staff, dormitories in bad condition. Some of you must have seen the uh, Fiji Times article on Muira District Primary School, where the dormitory was test dormitory some 30, 40 year old, students were getting bite, bitten by centipedes. It was a terrible thing. We immediately made arrangement to provide 70,000 to construct a totally new dormitory. We have started, it's the beginning, and we will transform the landscape of all primary and secondary schools throughout Fiji in three years time. This is just one year. This is just the beginning. I want to tell you that from now onwards, you don't worry. All we want is our head of school, in this case is the head teacher, in high school is the case of principal, to work very closely with the manager to ensure that the free education grant that we are giving, it is for this compound. It is for the school, for the children and for the teachers to improve the learning environment. It is not for managers or management to put it into the pocket. Please don't do that. We want every single cent to end up in improving the learning environment in the school. We will do more for this school. There's more coming, don't worry. Every child in this school who graduates out of year eight, because there's no high school close by, we have reserved your place in one of the dormitories of ACS, RKS, QVS, and National Secondary School. Don't worry. You don't have to put your child with a family in Suva, not knowing whether your child has a good study place, good place to sleep, or good learning environment. Don't worry. Schools like this, where there's no high school in the nearby, we will give you child preference in the boarding facility of ACS, RKS, QVS, or Nasinu Secondary School. That is why this year, myself and Prime Minister made the announcement that the boarding facilities at RKS, QVS, ACS, Nasinu Secondary School, Natambua in Lutoka, Lambasa College in Lambasa, those facilities are there to provide space to children who are from the interior in the maritime where there's no high school. It is not meant for children living in Suva area where there's a dozen or more high schools there. It is not meant for them. It is meant for these children. It is meant for them. These 10 students coming out of year eight, you tell us, you tell us where you want. We've got a place for them in boarding facility. That's 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 the Bani Marama government. We don't want someone staying in the in, in middle of Suba, walking past Janaran College or Suba Grema or Rishikul and sending the child to RKS or QVS or Nasinu I mean Nasinu Secondary School in the boarding. No, no, no. It's not meant for them. It's meant for these children. That is how we're doing it. That's our assurance. On top of that, about four weeks ago, the last cabinet meeting, we again changed the formula for free education grant. This student, this school, this year, Master, how much extra money you got? 3,000? Yeah, 4,000. 4, this year, you'll get about 5,000 or slightly more than that, probably 10,000 extra, less than 100 students. Additional money, apart from the normal FEG you're getting, 
there'll be another additional five to ten thousand you'll get next year for free education with that to help you to further repair, do repair and maintenance, ensure that everything is okay, change the blackboard to whiteboards, change some furnitures, ensure that teachers are getting the right stationery. The teachers must be getting quality stationery. We want them so that they can teach well. We want to look after our teachers. There's a lot of things coming. All the teachers that we took in this year, any 9-8 teacher here? Any 9A teacher here, ED 9A? No. All the teachers we took here this year, ED 9A with 12,000 salaries, next year their salaries is going up to 16,000, those who have a diploma, and those who have a degree, their salary is going up to 23,000, just approving the budget. So you can see, we are serious about education. We want a smarter Fiji. We want a Fiji where everyone is educated both through formal institutions like the school system as well as through informal institutions like the church, the temples, village communities. All of them should get together and educate our children. We alone, using the school system, cannot develop good citizens. It's a collective effort. It's a collective effort. I want you to understand that the children today is facing 20 times more difficult situation and challenges than what you faced or I faced in our time. Because we didn't have TV, we didn't have Facebooks and Internet and text messages and IT, where all kinds of informations are being bombarded to them. We didn't have it that day. What we had was farm, home, school. We knew we were under control. There was no interference. Now, there's someone else talking to them, apart from you, apart from the school teacher, apart from their friends. Someone else is talking to them through movies, through the colored lift out in the newspaper, through all Facebook and internet, that you don't know. You don't know what they're talking to them. They are good information, there are also bad information out there in the social media. And that will affect them. We need to look after them, we need to protect them, we need to guide them. They need more guidance now than they needed 20, 30 years ago. And we need to rise up to this challenge. Internet is good. IT revolution is good. Everyone wants the child to have a laptop. Everyone wants the child to know IT. But there's a caution with it. We need to ensure that we know what information your child is accessing. We should know what site on the internet that your child is logging on to. Otherwise, you can lose your child. It's not easy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are working very hard. At the same time, we're worried. Worried about the performance of our children. Worried about the performance of our teachers. I was worried in September last year when I looked at the declining results of year 12 and 13. I was very worried. And despite Numerous opposition, I started the reforms in Ministry of Education. Remove the scaling system so that we exactly know how our students are doing. Started to talk to the teachers to work hard to deliver because our students' performance has been declining. My worry was correct. My concern was on the mark because today we have just released year six examination result. You have got 11 students in the school who did year six. And the results are very worrying. In 2008, when we had year six external exam, intermediate exam, the last time in a larger scale, 2009 some schools did it. 
every student in 2008 passed all the subjects in 2008 we had greater than 50 percent pass rate all the subjects had greater than 50 percent pass rate today this year the year six results demonstrate that except for mathematics and vasavakaviti all the subjects pass rates are below 50 percent that shows the problem is not in the high school The problem is here in the primary school. Our teachers have put the guards down. Our students are not worried because there was no exams. Our parents were thinking, no problem. They'll go from the year six to seven, seven to eight, eight to nine, nine to ten, ten to eleven, eleven to twelve. Sangha after twelve, the external examiner, they fail, they go on. And then they were scaling it, year twelve. You're scaling the mark in year 13 to raise the mark so that the children can go to university. That has done incalculable damage to our education system. And today we saw the results. English pass mark in 2008 was 70 percent. Today, in this year's result, is 31 percent. That is the situation we have. Our teachers will have to work three times harder next year than the, what they did this year, because these children have dreams. And it's our duty to ensure that their dreams come true. What I'm asking you all is really behind the Ministry of Education, support support the reforms that we are undertaking. It is for them. We don't want to mislead them. We want to tell them. That you can also have a brighter future, like Master here, or Sundra there. But we need to support them. We need to work hard. The teachers are paid a salary to do a job from eight to four. They must do. They must deliver. That's their job. Their job is not to go and do very very. Their job is not to go and you know plant dal or, or do fishing. Their job is here inside the classroom. The parents bring the children, drop it at the gate of the school at 8 a.m. The children come here, and the parents don't worry because they know the child is in safe custody of the teachers. The child is here inside the classroom, getting new knowledge, learning, getting educated. And here, when we see the results of year six, I'm worried. Boy, what was the child doing whole of that year? Now the problem is, when you have the foundation, English or mathematics, or Vasavakaviti, or geography, or science, that bad in year six, then the foundation is spoiled. What they will do in high school, where the teacher in the high school in year twelve or year eleven or year ten is teaching, the student is lost. Because the student's foundation in primary school has been spoiled. That's what I'm saying to the teachers in primary school. Don't just do the cosmetic thing and you know get the student to move on and on and on. No, no, no. You're dumping the student on the high school teachers, and they are struggling because the student doesn't have the foot base, the foundation. So we're going to whip them, the teachers in primary schools. Do your job. We're paying them. We pay you, and if you tell today, this year, next year, again, if you still don't perform, then maybe your place is not in the high school system. Maybe your place is on the farm, because the parents, they have a dream for their children. We don't want teachers to come and contribute towards them not realizing the dream or their children not realizing the dream. So with these words, you know, it's a pleasure to be here, and I it's, uh, it's, uh, thank you very much for inviting us. You know, it's an honor to uh, come and do the uh, official opening of your quarters. And I want to assure you, we are doing our best. We're trying our best. We, we're working hard. You know, our prime minister is very serious about education. You will see in the budget, highest budget is for Ministry of Education. 
But if you take account the capital budget, then it's Ministry of, Ministry of Infrastructure is the highest. But other than that, Ministry of Education budget is the highest. Uh, we got about 16% of the total budget, which is a substantial amount of money. And we want to ensure that uh, that money is put to good use. We want to transform all the schools. We don't want any more, any more, the parents or community members to look for money to pay for school quarters repair, or etc. No, don't worry. We look after. We look after all the schools. Eh? This is the message from our Prime Minister, Honorable Bani Marama, that look, we will look after your school, your um, your um, you know quarters and everything. Uh, leave it, give it to us. Leave it to us. That's our job, and we'll do it. And we want to thank you for standing up and doing what you did some 30, 40 years ago of con constructing these classrooms and building. Thank you very much. At that time, uh, you know, it was difficult for government to construct all the schools, but now we are ready and we are taking the lead, taking charge of it. Thank you, Vinaka. And anyway.